Hey everyone, PAX East is over, which means we are back to the grind, which means Worth Playing is back again as well. Got a lot to catch up on. We're going to try and run through a couple games quick this week because, hey, there's a lot going on. And there's a lot that I've missed. Uh, we're going to start out with Treachery in Beatdown City, which is a turn-based beat-em-up uh, that is currently uh, looking for funds on Kickstarter. So if it's something you're interested in seeing happen, uh, you can head to their Kickstarter page and throw them a little bit of love uh, even though we don't tend to cover a lot of Kickstarter games uh, here at Giant Bomb, if you've got a build of your game I can play, I'm going to check it out. So uh, let's go ahead and click to start. Oh, that's right. Okay. So I'm running through this like a like a Vita emulator thing. It's like part of the SDK. So like the, the up, down, left, right is on my right-hand side with my fingers, and then the square and circle keys are on WASD. It's... A little bit strange. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> My fingers will figure it out for a turn-based game anyway. All right, use the D-pad to move. Let's move my guy on over here. We're gonna walk to that punching bag. Sure we are. When close to the back, press square to open the combo menu. C -c -c combo. Uh, square. Okay. This is the combo menu. Here you select actions to perform. Each action requires five points. And one bar of combo meter to perform. You can perform one or three actions at a time. Press up down to scroll, and then cross to select actions. Okay, so let's see, we got 32 points. So yeah, chin shot, a boxing jab. We got 14 left. Maybe another chin shot. Put those in. Boom! Broke that bag with three of combo. Look at us. When you hit two more strikes in a row, this can grant combo mode. Combo mode increases the accuracy of the next string of strikes. Oh, that's I guess why I got that little C above me. After using the up combo meter, it will refill over time. When the meter fills, hit the remaining bag. Boop. All right. Uh, so that's all I got. Killed it. So you might know uh, or remember vaguely the designer of this game, Sean Alexander Allen, who. Uh, I wrote actually about his game uh, before it was on Kickstarter originally. It was on Kickstarter and then uh, didn't make its funding goals, so he kind of went back to the drawing board uh, to figure out exactly how to bring this game back, how to how to pitch it uh, in a way that might get people more interested. Uh, so it's back on Kickstarter again, but the uh, article that I wrote was talking about from his perspective, trying to make this beat em up that has like a New York flavor, it reflects the diversity in his life, uh, and a lot about. Um, you know what he sees in the world and uh, what he saw growing up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and. All right, so I'm close enough, which means now I can start an attack. So I guess I'll just pick my three. Oh, now he's attacking me. All right, this is the defense menu. Doing nothing takes full damage. I don't want to do that. Block always uses FP to attempt to block, but won't always work. Attempting to block too often reduce your ability to attack. Okay. Well, I'd like to block, but I guess I, I, guess I won't. Alright, so I walk away. I wait for that meter to fill up. So I can do three attacks again. Grapples are now available. Grapples use combo meter and fight points just like strikes. Grapples require at least two bars to perform, two bars of combo meter to perform. Grapples are riskier than strikes, but also very strong. Enemies have different grapple counter rates based on fighting style and current health level. Switch between action tabs using L and R. Ooh, I, uh, hold on. I don't, I gotta look at the controls. L and R. Q and E. Boom! Man, I am pretty good at this video game. You know, I, don't, I don't like to brag, but I mean, you guys saw what happened. I like the concept. I have really, in probably the last five years, soured on beat em ups. At least, you know, like the idea of playing like older beat em ups that you know, I used to treasure my time with. Even earlier this week. Uh, I played Turtles in Time at an arcade here in Chicago, and I was falling asleep playing it. Uh, 
Uh, press cross, reform, quick, quick strikes. Cross. Woo! There's just... Uh, there, there's something about some of those arcade beat-em-ups that, you know, you feel like that they were created specifically to just mine quarters, which is true, obviously. They're arcade games. They need to subsist on uh, quarters in order for them to make any sense. Oh, Lisa, President Orama. And... I don't know. I, it, there is certainly probably skill involved, and you could probably watch YouTube videos where someone plays Turtles in Time and never gets hit, but... Man, I was just not enjoying my time with it at all, and Turtles in Time used to be... Like one of my favorite games ever uh, when that game originally came out. You know, I was a big fan of the Simpson game. I was a big fan of... Well, oh, well. I guess that's it. I guess that's the little bit. Or did I accidentally quit? Alright, we are back. Figured out what I had to do. Alright, so now we're looking at kind of like an overworld area. I wish we should get into some of the actual uh, fighting here. It's got a cool little visual style. Alright, set up uh, some of my attacks. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so I turned away, which means now I'm not going to be able to... Okay, so I can turn around to face the enemy. I can wait for that to power up. I can walk away a little bit. Block. Which now he's gonna walk away, which gives me a little bit of time to set up my next combo. Which means I can just really go for it on this one. Boom. Three of combo. Oh, he's not done. Oh, he's just down. Shoot. Let's back off. Let's move away. Let's go for a grapple this time. Q. Grab. Clinch punch. Boom. Block. That just seems I'm blind. That's bad. I don't like being blind. Okay, I did my little quick jab there. Chin shot. Dang. Well, I can't do anything here because I got no fighting points. Now he's gonna be able to attack again. Ah. Do nothing. Get, get a little bit of distance. I can't quite tell how much uh, health he's got. Let's try a grab again. Can you do a strike and then a grab? Okay, no. That didn't work. Not doing well. I feel like this fight started like pretty good, and then it all just kind of went downhill for me. So if you get that combo attack, then yeah, then you you get a chance to build up points, which obviously helps when you're going in for the... Hmm. Alright, guy is down for the count. The combo attack tab is now available. Needs to learn the tree Trez Jabs combo. Anyway, I, what I was saying about the sort of beat-em-ups is, is they just feel less skill-based than, than other games, and I don't know. It just doesn't, not, it doesn't quite do it for me anymore. Although I did really like Castle Crashers, so it's not like there aren't some modern beat-em-ups that aren't fun to play. Alright, so let's see we got something new, right? Uh, uh, three jab combo. So I need I need 30 fighting points in order to do that, so I can't even pull that off right now. Um, let's just go for the... right off the bat, let's just kill it. Nope. <laughs> that, that was a bad idea. Right, wait for that to power up, kind of move out of the way a little bit. Chin shot. Boom. Yeah. Let's block it. Can't really do anything about that right now. Wait for that to fill up. Not really figuring out like what the how much strategy there really is to this. I'm sure that becomes more apparent as you play more of the game, but at least well, I guess I'm bleeding now. Alright, I can do my new uh oh Fudge. Do nothing. Alright, three jab combo. Got it. Nope. Wait, did I pick the right thing? Okay. 
Kumbu. Oh man, I'm just rocking it right now. Down for the count. It's an interesting idea to try and add <coughs> a little bit of uh, depth to uh, this genre. And actually, in some ways, sort of addresses what I was just talking about uh, in the sense that. Oh, nope. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Charge it up, charge it up, charge it up. In a sense, it just feels like sometimes these games are unfair, and at least in this one, you have. You break it down and there's dice rolls and things like that, so I don't know, I guess it feels a little more on point. Honest than some of those games can sometimes feel. Well, I hope she goes down, because otherwise I'm gonna die. Mm. And that is it. That's Treachery and Beatdown City, if you're interested in checking it out. I don't think the demo itself is publicly available, uh, but uh, you can uh, see more of the game at the Kickstarter page and decide if you want to back it. Let's move on to the next game. Hey, Ron. Our next game is Landslide McQueen. Let's go ahead and enter our name. Um, hmm. 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 We could, uh, I got this stack of PAX cards. We could, like, it could be Dave Lang. I can be Max Temkin. I could be Brad Shoemaker. Let's be Dave Lang. Let's be Bat Tech. Bat Tech. That should give me a leg up on the competition. All right, let's go ahead and play. Press space to start. Left to right, where are all these people going? Why don't they think it's weird that I'm in the middle of this road? I probably should have gone off that ramp. Oh, and I hit these people, and then I fell off. Okay. I don't know why. I don't. Unsure of a lot of things that just happened. Not okay, let's uh, I guess stick to the to the right so that we can jump. Woo Does that mean we're gonna Okay. So I guess you're just trying to hit as many people as possible? Is that it? That might be it. High score. I used to get more. I just like run into this car. Oh! Oh. Oh. Well, now I seem to be flying. I appear to be some sort of genie. So you get points if you go off that ramp. <laughs> Alright. Now I get a little bit more of what's going on. Look at that, my score got up. Hit space spark. Really like the, the mustache this guy is rocking. Makes me jealous that I can't do more with my own facial hair. You know, it's just like, sure I've got a little bit going on, but a lot of people have way more going on. And I'm jealous of that. I'm jealous that other people have options. I don't have options. I can just kind of grow what I got and you gotta move on with your life at some point. Yeah, I'm still getting points. I guess if you like knock guys down, then they'll run into the other guys, and then yeah, like I'm still getting some points all the way from the corner. Oh, look at that! Let's go ahead and at least do another one more run. I don't normally play score-based games. I was in a conversation with someone about this recently. They were asking me if I had played Loot Rousers, which uh, I have, and, and and I am you know enjoying it on some level, but. I just tend to not really get caught up in, in score-based games. I am not someone that usually spends a lot of time playing the same game over and over and over again. Boom, high score. Why would I want to do anything more than stop at uh, 100,000? So, yeah, for me, like, score-based games, 
I just don't get motivated in the same way that, that other people do. Maybe it's just a lack of a sense of competition. Uh, maybe it's because the people aren't in the room with me. I don't know. It's just I can't quite get in that mentality of going back and like, yeah, I'm going to kick that guy's ass and get, a, and get a better score than him. Whereas if you play something that has objectives, even if it is just doing the same thing over and over again, giving me a structure gives me motivation to keep going deeper and deeper. I think it's why I got hooked on Binding of Isaac. I think it's why I got hooked on Spelunky. Because if you think about Spelunky, you know, the objectives of like beating Yama and, and uh, beating Olmec, you know, they, they're they really just teaching you how to do things in the game so you can compete on things like the daily. So it's not like you're playing the game because the ending is all that important. Uh, you're playing towards those objectives on doing the thing, same things over and over again, but the game bridges your skills uh, to becoming a more skilled player uh, by giving you those objectives along the way. So I like stuff like that. So like Lou Frousers, the fact that I'm unlocking new equipment for uh, my, my fighter pilot, that at least gives me motivation to keep playing because I've got things I can be doing. There are many objectives, uh, such as, you know, you know, get X amount of points or d defeat these uh, kinds of enemies X amount of times. That at least gives me something to do on every run, and uh, it doesn't seem like the game has a whole lot of that, but it's at least enough to keep me motivated to keep playing for a little bit more than just, well, I can't seem to do better than what I did right now. So, anyway, rant aside, let's move on to our next game. Hey everyone, our last game is Kilobyte, in which, I don't know, we have a pattern worth playing recently where we're going to play first-person games that make Patrick feel awfully disoriented while he uh, tries to talk over them or have just random conversations with himself. And I think Kilobyte is going to be no differently than that. It's based off of Snake, or at least is an evolution of the idea behind Snake. So, you, so I won't play for serious right now, but you see, like, I got wee Kind of weaving yourself around. You can see I'm trying to eat the end of my own tail. And then as you pick up these red pieces, which I didn't do. I could have done. I got 12 points, though. How many points did you get? I played so much Snake in various forms growing up. Uh, first, I had a uh, TI-83 calculator, which is actually like my first exposure to mobile games that wasn't a Game Boy, but I, I couldn't bring a Game Boy to school. But once you got into uh, certain levels of math, like algebra and calculus, uh, you, uh, if not had a TI-83, a calculator or like an equivalent. I'm sure the 83 is like far outclassed at this point. I don't know what number they're on now. But because they were basically mini computers, you could run software programs on there. So there were like crappy versions of uh, Mario and Zelda and other things. There was also when I played the 3DS uh, Chinatown Wars GTA game, which was fantastic. And I feel like nobody played that game and instead just got really excited about the like recreations of the 3D games on Vita, or not Vita, PSP, even though secretly Chinatown Wars, well, I guess it wasn't 3DS, it was just regular DS, right? Ah, damn it. Like, Chinatown Wars is where it's at, man. I think they ended up porting that game to other platforms. I'm not sure which other ones, but if you didn't play Chinatown Wars, you should have. Anyway, back to the point. So Chinatown Wars, uh, one of like the, the backbones of the gameplay is sort of this, uh, this drug game where you are uh, buying and selling drugs throughout town and doing that in addition to uh, sort of the other missions that you're assigned and are doing as part of the story. And that drug game, which I'm sure, I hope someone in the comments can, can let me know exactly what game I'm thinking of, but there was definitely a drug game for uh, Texas Instrument Calculators back in, I guess, the early 2000s in which you bought and sold drugs. And it was, oh man, it was so friggin' popular. And it was crazy because, like, the way that not everyone had ready access to computers, but it was possible you had access to a calculator because you needed it for class. I think they had ones you could rent, but then you had to do all your homework at school, and so most people got their hands on one. Uh, at least I was lucky enough to be able to have, have one, but not everyone had the link cable. So you had something that kind of looked like an auxiliary cable, because USB definitely was not around back then or at least was in its infancy and, and not prevalent. Uh, but like this kind of like auxiliary looking cable went between the, the two calculators and then you could transfer software. Of course, it like worked like a tenth of the time. Like oftentimes you, god damn it, let's move up the speed. 
you'd be at lunch. Uh, no. And you'd be like, oh crap, we got five minutes for class. Hey man, can you like send me that Pokemon ripoff that's that came out? And so you'd hook it up, and then you're sitting there like watching the progress bar like slowly, slowly, slowly fill up. And then inevitably at the end, it would just completely fail. Which seems to be my experience more than most. Uh, the Mario Brothers variant was definitely one that sticks out in my mind. I'm trying to think of like what other. I mean, obviously there was Snake, and there was a lot of variations on Snake. And then I played even more Snake when I got my first cell phone. Which I definitely didn't get in middle school because they weren't really prevalent back then. Um, sometime and sometime in high school, probably around the time that I was able to drive. Um, probably how my parents justified buying the cell phone for. A 16-year-old was, well, at least we can get a hold of him when he was coming home past curfew and was trying not to get caught by the cops after, well, I guess midnight was the curfew in our area. Um, so I used to that by 11.30 or so. In any case, like, I, I don't think there were storefronts, or at least I don't recall there being one, but you had Snake, and that's about all you could really do on that phone. I mean, there was a way of connecting it to your computer. I was able to add my own ringtones. But I definitely don't think you could add your own software. Because I, you know, I was too nervous to hack my Razer cell phone uh, in order to, to pull that off. The, the Razer cell phone was the, the first cell phone I really had. And then when I moved to San Francisco, my dad was like, You probably need a better cell phone. You know, you're moving out of San Francisco for work. So you're probably sort of more professional. So we split the cost of a, God, a Palm Trio, I think is what I had. Which, like, it did email. So, I mean, that's... That's professional. I mean, this is years before the... Or maybe not years, but like maybe a year, year and a half before the debut of the iPhone. Uh, which is a weird way to think about how the cellular market has changed since then. But it really was totally different back then. And like a phone that was fully featured in which it... By fully featured, I mean it had a crappy web browser and did email was enough to feel like, oh, I'm buying a business phone. And of course, I got that out to San Francisco. I had it for a couple of months, uh, and then I, something fell off of a table and fell right on the uh, my laptop. My, 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 my Mac laptop fell off of the couch when I was shifting my butt, uh, and it fell right on the Palm Trio and just shattered the screen. So that was the end of my Palm Trio. I don't think I had any software on that Palm Trio. I probably did, but given that I only had the phone for three, four months, uh, which obviously I did not tell my parents because I split the cost of the phone with them. So I was spending a lot of my money moving out to San Francisco and uh, trying to figure out rent uh, out there, which was more costly. But uh, yeah, I guess those are all the weird stories that Snake sort of brings to mind. It's actually weird how, how much I have tied in with the game Snake, even though I don't know if I'd call it a bad game, but I, it's not like a particularly exciting game. I think this is probably a more interesting take on it in a 3D world. I would. This seems like this could be kind of cool with an Oculus. If you were pointing your head to get yourself around, it wouldn't work with the current dev kit very well because, good lord, would it be disorienting. But the couple of Oculus games I've played where you, the player directs themselves around an environment with their head or at least manipulates an object uh, with their head. For example, there was the, uh, mm, can't remember what the demo was called, but it won an award, n n none of this is terribly specific. In any case, the demo involved you on a uh, fixed path in which you were a uh, an elephant and you were controlling, uh, it's, it's tusk, it's a, uh, mm, elephant's mm, like nose, mm, no, mm, what's the word I'm searching for? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So you wave that around with your head, and it works really well. But I bet something like this would be super disorienting. But I, I should, I should pre-order that second dev kit. I should do it. I should do it. And I should probably stop this video. That's worth playing for this week. As always, you can send me suggestions over email, over Tumblr, over Twitter, over PM. It's not hard to get a hold of me. If you're a developer that's got a game that you'd like to see featured, I won't guarantee it, but I will hear you out and I will probably respond to your email or request. Uh, if you had saw something cool that you think might be uh, worth checking out, just give me a shout and let me know and I'll make sure to put it on the list to be considered for next week's edition of Worth Playing. See you all next week.